Let's sit further back, John. Oh, so can we move our chairs back? Okay. Oh. Okay. Let me just make sure that we're visible on all these screens. Yep. Yeah, you, you need to come this way. That should be good. Okay. All right, everyone. Uh, welcome. I probably should wear my glasses so I can see you better. Um, so we can't get rid of the volume? No, nope, can't. Let's put it all the way down. So then we can't use it. Okay. So you want me to turn it off? One second. Bear with us. We're just getting ourselves organized here. It's uh, three o'clock. We're excited to be with you. Let me just tilt this down a bit. I think that's better. Um, okay. So today um, we are going, your mic is off. Is mine off? Nope, mine's on. All right. Okay, ready to get started. Um, so today we are going to be giving you an overview of the bendable body method, but we're also hoping to get pretty specific um, with some things that we know are a big deal for people. Um, so everybody knows I'm Sita. I'm John, and we're going to be explaining uh, resistance stretching, how they're associated with fascia, the meridians, and balancing pairs, which is the first step in the deep dive in the courses that we're previewing uh, for your problem solving. So you learn about your body to fix it when you need to. Yeah, the goal here is to help you understand that, um, you know, we're thinking about the body and the way that it works and how to deal with pain and stiffness differently than pretty much all other exercise methods and really even differently than the medical world. So we're bringing you an option that's really effective and that you're not really going to find elsewhere. So that's what we want to talk about today is, you know, uh, how that, how that is applied through this method. Cause we know that a big problem for most of us, and it's starting at an earlier and early age is stiffness in the body and pain in the body. Right. So that's what we want to address today. Okay. So as far as are we ready to get started? Yeah. Yep. We're going to kind of tag team this, go back and forth, and there's going to be some stretching at the end. It's hard for us to see the screen and answer questions, but we'll definitely answer questions at the end. Um, okay. So the first thing that you need to know about the bendable body method and resistance stretching is fascia. Okay. And actually, John, if you want to sneak in and see what people are typing, that might be good because we can then maybe if anybody's got any big questions or comments. Yeah. Are yeah, you able we'll, to see the screen from here? Because mm -hmm. I sure can. So Sounds can in echoing. Something happened with your sound. Audio is going in and out. See, that's good that we checked. All Let's right. see what's Weird going on. sound issues. Hold on. Bear with us. Bear with us. Audio. Test speakers up here. For what they can hear. No. Test speakers. Okay. Testing the audio. Testing. Huh, that works. Okay. How about now? How's it sounding now? Can you guys give us a got a thumbs up from Joanne? So thumbs so, yeah, so we've got five better. thumbs up. Okay. I don't know what it's happened. Clear now. We didn't better. do anything. So okay. anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um okay. <laughs> Now let's get started. Um, so the first thing that you have to know about the bendable body method is what is fascia and why you need to care about it. Okay. We wouldn't make you learn something new and care about something if it wasn't vitally important. Okay. So fascia, for those of you, those of you that don't know, it's the connective tissue in your body. Okay. What's that? If you try and visualize the inside of your body, you can visualize your muscles, you can visualize your tendons, your ligaments, your bones, your organs, your blood vessels. Everybody can kind of visualize all that. We've all looked at anatomy books. Fascia is like a broth that it's all floating in, okay? It's connecting all of it. Um, under a microscope, it looks like a three-dimensional web. Everybody's seen a spider web, okay? And so it's a very, like, am I hearing something? It's a very, are we getting more, is the sound an issue? 
I, I just heard this weird noise. So we're good? Okay. So it's, it's a connective tissue. It connects everything. And it allows everything that goes on in the body to go on because it's happening in and through it. So like if you can picture it as this broth, right, that all of that stuff is floating in, every function of every organ, of every muscle, of your bones, of your all of it, blood vessels, even the meridian system, which we're going to get into later, is happening in and through this fascia. So the health, yeah, go ahead. And each cell in our body is structured in a fascial structure. That's also, so. Yeah, I think that's really important because a lot of times we, what we do know about fascia is pretty superficial. Like anybody who's cut into a piece of chicken or a piece of meat is aware of that membrane, that outer kind of um, translucent layer. Um, and, and they're like, oh, that's connective tissue. And that is connective tissue, but it's just like the tip of the iceberg, right? This is an all pervasive tissue and everything in your body happens in and through it. Okay. And so it's vitally important, vitally, vitally important, particularly as it relates to the muscles in terms of our work. Okay. And, and one of the big problems with fascia, which is why I think it's not being addressed. One of the reasons you can't feel it. So let's just stop for a moment here and really take that in. You can't feel your fascia. So that is really kind of a mind screw. I mean, think about it, right? You, you know, we're telling you it's at the root of pain and problems and essential to stretching, but you can't feel it. But the odd thing is it has five times as many nerve endings as the nervous system. It communicates 10 times faster than the nervous system. And again, it's all pervasive. Um, so it's this like yeah. silent, so, quiet. Super computer. Super computer, yeah, there you go. Okay, so, so now you've got kind of a general view of it, but let's get more specific as it relates to pain and stiffness, which is what we're focusing on, stretching, okay? And actually strength as well. So every muscle in your body, there's like over 600 of them, Every muscle fiber, which if you can visualize it, think of like the inside of an orange, right? A little orange peel. They're not called peels. What's, what's an orange slice, an orange slice. There's all those little individual orange, orange slice fibers. Everybody's seen that before. That's kind of like a muscle fiber inside of a general muscle. Each one of those is poured into a fascia pocket, okay? So we all know that our mobility, our flexibility, our pain, our energy levels, our strength, they, it all requires strong muscles, muscles that are developed, muscles that work. Everybody knows that. That's not a mystery. That's what all the gyms are about. That's what all the yoga classes are about, the exercise classes, the running, all of it, right? Get your muscles strong. PT, get your muscles strong. The problem is the strength and flexibility of your muscles is 1,000% dependent on your fascia because of the way that they're related, because of the degree to which the fascia penetrates and surrounds each and every muscle, okay? So, okay, no problem there, great. So you need this fascia to be healthy. How are you gonna get it healthy and why does it get unhealthy, okay? So a really simple way to think about it, because we wanna keep this simple, because it actually is very simple. Everybody's seen a little baby and interacted with a little baby, right? Their body is soft and movable. There's very little resistance in it, right? They can, you can kind of like bend them this way and they're bendy. They're super bendy, right? They're brand new. They have ultra healthy fascia. The fascia is hydrated, pliable. They haven't had any traumas yet. They haven't sat in a chair for 15 years or you know, been yelled at over and over again or thrown a baseball over and over again. They're brand new. They've got this super fresh, hydrated, pliable spider web inside of them that everything moves through, okay? Now, fast forward to a 95-year-old. Everybody got the picture in their head? Or a 55-year-old. Yeah, you can go 55-year-old. I'm just trying to give you an extreme example. There's like no movement, right? Think about a baby's arm just bends backward. A 90-year-old is like, ugh. Uh, uh. that's because the movement is happening in and throughout extremely hardened, dense fascia that's accumulated over time through repetitive movement, like what we're doing right here, sitting in a chair. That's a big offender. 
Um, or like even running is a repetitive movement if you don't make lots of variety of movements. Also emotional, psychological traumas, all of these go right into the body and harden and stiffen the fascia, which becomes extremely resistive. It has tons of resistive force in it and you don't know it. And you keep trying to strengthen your muscles. Okay. It, it, it. It, in a sense, it's the healing of the wound or the healing of the damage of the tissue that happened. Yeah. So that like the scar tissue or the adhesion in the fascia. Yeah. So, 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 so that's, I think, a, a term that people are really familiar with is scar tissue. Scar tissue is just very unhealthy fascia. And the medical world uses adhesions uh -huh. as, you know, these. And there's the obvious ones where we were injured or that, you know, uh, there were problems. But... The dense fascia is not just superficially around the muscle or just under the skin. It could be deep in the muscle. Mm -hmm. It could even go into the bones. Yeah. Yes. Even into your organs, right? So you get this really unhealthy tissue. And the way that we like to kind of describe it is imagine, you can think of it in two ways we usually use. Like you poured cement into your muscles. <laughs> Are they going to move very well? Yeah. No. Or you put yeah. a straight jacket on and you're trying to move within it. You, 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 it's not going to work. You mentioned the baby being brand new, fresh, and, a, and, a, and then, you know, as a young child and adolescent, at one point you're getting kind of faster and stronger, but at what point, and this is different for everybody, and I just thought of it now, at what point do you start to get slower and weaker? Yeah. You know, and th the whole idea with federal body resistance stretching is to get faster and stronger, which you do. Um, but people don't think in that term. They just think of just hanging on, hanging on, hanging on, hanging on, you know, doing some exercise. Well, I think another thing, one thing you might be trying to say there is you have a brand new baby with all of this potential and the opportunity to develop it. And instead, mm -hmm. we just over time destroy ourselves. We get stiffer and stiffer and stiffer because we don't pay attention to this fascia. Another analogy that we like to give is you can think of it like, imagine if you never brushed your teeth ever. You have this brand new baby. Mm -hmm. Teeth start to come in, never brushed them, ate all the food, did all the things in the mouth and never, there's going to be an accumulation of ick and plaque. And so that's what's happening to the fascia because it never gets addressed. It never gets interfaced with. It requires its own form of movement. Strengthening doesn't address it. Traditional stretching doesn't address it. You can come at it from the outside with, you know, various forms of massage and tools and whatnot, but it's very difficult for those to penetrate deep enough. Okay. So it requires its own movement and it actually requires resistance because it has so much resistance in it when it's so unhealthy. Okay. And so that is what this method does. This method removes the unhealthy fascia that's accumulated in your body so that you can actually develop strength, movement, or get back lost strength and movement, and the pain and the injuries can go away, okay? Very, very simple. Comes down to the fascia. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what we're doing with resistance stretching. And so now the next step is to understand, well, okay, what's resistance, what's stretch? resistance stretching? How do we actually do this movement to get at the fascia? Now, I just put some points down to make it simple so you understand it. Um, it's uh, a simple interface with fascia and muscle at the same time. So uh, when people think of stretching, they think of stretching their muscles. And all the forms of stretching actually don't stretch muscles. They overstretch ligaments and tendons. And so uh, what's unique about resistance stretching is that you resist and that engages the fascia and the fascia is protecting and encasing the muscle and it suspends you at your joints. Yes, that's a good, really important point. Okay, um, so it protects you. The next point I wanted to make is that there's no pain. So, um, and, and going back to what you originally said about fascia, there's no sensation. So traditional stretching, you get that end range, you go, I can feel it stretching. When you're resisting and you stay in the resistance and we start with the muscle short and then resist and get it longer, keeping the resistance through whatever range you have, um, there's no feeling except you feel the force at the heel, at the hand, at the elbow, 
at the knee. You can kind of feel the resistive force in the area that you're stretching. It's yeah. a little indirect, yeah. but there's clearly a force. Yeah, the, the healthier the tissue is, the more you are aware of the muscle engaging and feeling the muscle stretch. Um, and I want to say, you know, Sita said earlier, it, it, it's a, really a form of strength training. And this has been uh, identified at universities across the country, I'm sure elsewhere, at these uh, big universities that have sports programs. Resistance stretching, which you don't call it resistance stretching, you call it actively loaded eccentric movements, produce 15 to 20% greater strength gains than weightlifting. So you can sit there in a gym and push all the weight you want and spend all, you're not gonna get as strong as you would than doing resistance stretching. Hard concept to kind of grok, but it's true. I've seen it work for a lot of athletes over the years, young kids, old kids. I think a, a big, you know, thought that people have in their mind is, okay, well, I'm stiff, so I definitely, you know, they're clear when they're stiff, I need to stretch. Okay. And so we're talking about, well, the stiffness you're feeling is definitely unhealthy fascia. You need to change that. But what about if you have pain, right? What if you have pain in a joint, uh, your knee, your low back? your, um, you know, neck, your shoulder, whatever, you've got pain, are you able to stretch? And John made the point that when you engage the fascia with resistance, with these resistance stretch movements that we teach that are not traditional stretching, your joints are suspended and protected. That was one of my points coming. Well, well you just made that point, so I'm kind of remind. I want you to go deeper. So rehabilitation, Yeah. so people that are injured, um, you know, there's physical therapy, there's rehabilitation and it's gentle. You know, if you just had shoulder surgery, you know, you're not going to go hundred percent with, you know, a 30 pound weight in your arm and start, but with resistance stretching, because it engages the fascia, there are moves you can make where that person can resist a hundred percent and give everything they got. And we can make a really nice small movement and they're going to feel better. Um, and it's not in the joint. It's not the joint. It's not it goes, anywhere near the it, joint. Because it just, the denser the fascia, the more resistive force you have, the less, less feeling you have. But there's no pain involved. And you per, you're prevented from overstretching, which causes uh, denser fascia to accumulate. It, it's, it's really, I think, tricky because there's so much fear and fright out there when you're in, with people who are in pain. They're, you know, really afraid to do something. And the whole purpose of this method is to empower you to actually be able to solve your issue and not be afraid, but you're going to have to start to engage with the fascia in order to do that. So what yeah, it's a very simple exercise. So let's tell them exactly what resistance stretching is. Like, what is it? What is the, what is the movement? Are we going to demonstrate? Yeah, one? Sure, yeah. sure. Okay. I'm going to stand back and we're going to do a simple. So we actually, um, we can combine two and one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So um, the courses, which we're kind of giving you a preview of, you're going to experience things in your body that are really, really cool. You're going to learn how to problem solve. Be able, if something hurts, you'll be able to point to exactly where it is and then stretch a muscle that's the root cause of that and get relief right away. And then it's up to you to do as much resistance and movements as you want. Oh, so, oh, okay. Okay. So we'll do that now. So, um, I would like everyone maybe just to stand up and then uh, what we're going to do is just to put our arms up at our side, elbows about shoulder height and move the arms back until you get that sensation and feeling in your chest. You feel the chest muscles at the shoulder. Okay. Can you feel that? Now, do you, is there any sensation on your back? I don't feel any sensation in my back. I feel it all right in here, okay? Now, this is stretching, it's lengthening, right? Now, we're gonna teach you a stretch for the shoulder. We'll do one arm first, and then we'll check it out. We'll do a couple little sets here. Um, let's put one arm up, same about shoulder height. Uh, relax the wrist and hand, the arms about 90 degrees. And we're gonna stretch the shoulder and the back of the shoulder and the tricep. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the elbow. Now the elbow and the arm that we're stretching is gonna resist, but it's gonna move backward. So we're gonna move it backward, but our helper hand is grabbing the elbow and pulling against resistance. Resist, keep the resistance, and just do about you know six to eight inches and let it go 
and do it again. So we're gonna do about 10 of these. So resist right in the start. Spend some time resisting, 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 and then let it go and go back to the start. And you, know, you can bend your knees and you know get a nice comfortable athletic stance. Let it go. So we're resistant stretching now. This is a resistant stretch for your shoulder. And how's it different from traditional stretching, John? Uh, traditional stretching, we focus on the end range. And we're focusing on the beginning range. What does that mean? Like, what would a traditional stretch of the shoulder look like? Well, it would look like this, where you're pulling on an end range. But we're not doing that. Okay. We're resistant stretching. So let's keep going. Let's do about three or four more. Let it go when you return. We're only resisting in one direction. Okay. Okay. Oh, wow. Let's shake that out. Now, I guess you can notice anything that changed in between the two arms right now. But let's go back and do, and let's move the arm back. And I'm noticing the arm can go back further. And I lost that stretchy feeling. Did you lose a little bit of that stretchy feeling? You still have it over here? So we improve the flexibility of the front of the chest and shoulder by stretching the back. We didn't stretch the front, we stretched the back. Now, who would have thought to have done that, right? So the number one thing in flexibility that people aren't focusing on or range of motion is the ability of a muscle to contract and shorten. So what just happened? We stretch this muscle and when we move our arms back, it can go back further. So the back can shorten more, and now this moves more easily. So if you're feeling strain or stress in a joint or somewhere, it's not the source. It's simply the uh, symptom. And then you want to, we're going to do more. We're going to come back and we're going to do more sets and we'll even our arms out. But I wanted to give you an idea of what resistance stretching is. Uh, and we'll, we'll test that in the legs too. Just, uh, so I think um, one thing that's really important to understand about it um, as it relates to what we all already understand, which is traditional stretching or strength training, because resistance stretching is neither. You're starting with the muscle group in a short position, okay? Then you're adding resistance while you lengthen. So you're not holding a stretch like you would in traditional stretching. It's a movement and you're resisting throughout. You're never getting passive, Okay. And that is what allows you to engage the fascia, just like John demonstrated. And you felt that, hopefully. You felt that resistive force, but at the same time, didn't feel a traditional stretch. So why wouldn't you feel the traditional stretch? Because you're engaging fascia, which traditional stretching does not, okay? And then the other point, which I think is super important, and we're going to get into that in a little bit more time, and this is really how we want to empower you, okay? Because... You know, the biggest problem as we age, and that's starting to become younger and younger, actually, is pain, pain and stiffness, right? And everybody, I just heard someone say it today, everybody gets fixated on their pain point and they want to focus there. I need to strengthen there. I need to stretch there. I get emails about it all the time. I have pain in X, Y, and Z. What stretch should I do? Like, wh like what's the best stretch for that area? And I'm like, don't stretch it. Don't strengthen it. Don't stretch it. Stay away from it. And it's for the exact reason that John just demonstrated. You can't feel your fascia. It's causing problems in areas that you're not even aware of. And instead, you're aware of the symptom, which is the pain point. Okay. Um, do you want to just maybe like, I, I was thinking, I mean, you kind of did it there, but I was also thinking just like, what is a resistant stretch? Like, like maybe, maybe do a demo or do you know what I mean? With the leg and the hamstring? No, no. Maybe just talk it through. I was thinking, what do you think? The four pillars of the stretch. Yeah. Let's do that. So it's very simple. It's very simple. The two things you have to know, um, what muscle group are you stretching? Okay. And you have to resist, you know, after that, it, and you only lengthen a muscle as long as it can resist. It's also really important that you start with the muscle in a shortened position. Like, so for example, what John was just doing, he started with his arm back here to stretch the back of the shoulder. Whereas if you were traditionally doing a stretch, you would start here and pull harder, right? So we don't almost ever get to that place. We almost never get to the end range of a stretch. It's rare, okay? So, I mean, do you agree with that? Is it rare? Well. Yeah, because it's limited. So if we're stretching the back of the shoulder, 
The limiting factor is the chest, its ability to shorten. So you can feel resistance and you can pull as far as you want, but the muscle that you're stretching stops resisting and contracting at a certain point and then you're going into the joint. Yeah. So um, it's always kind of, you should be careful and pay attention to the resistance because as the resistance starts to wane, stretch is over. Right. Okay, so we have two more things that we want to cover before we get going, uh, before we finish. So let me just kind of recap what we've done so far. Fascia, you have to interface with your fascia if you're going to deal with the source of pain, stiffness, and strength. And that's because of the relationship it has with every single muscle in your body. First point. Second point, resistance stretching. These movements that we teach target fascia. They remove it, they exfoliate it, they change the denseness of it directly. There's zero pain when you do it, you get stronger and your joints are protected, okay? So now we wanna get into the deeper health associations with stretching and also how you can directly follow a simple template to problem solve your pain point where you stop fixating on the symptom and you go to the source. Okay, so that's what we're going to cover now. So meridians, shall we start with that? Sure, meridian organ relationships. Correct. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah, so um, as we already told you, your fascia is this broth that, it's not a broth, it's an analogy, like a bowl of soup. It's a three-dimensional web that I'm describing as like a broth that everything in your body is floating in or residing in, including meridian channels. Now, for those of you that don't know what a meridian channel is, it's an energetic pathway, kind of like a blood vessel that blood travels through, but a meridian is not physical, it's energetic. It's an electrical current. An electrical current. So if you go get acupuncture, which everybody's familiar with, they're putting those needles in points along a meridian pathway, okay? And each of those meridians, there are thousands of meridians, but there are 16 primary meridians in the body. And each of them services an organ, like it travels in the body to an organ, travels through fascia, through a muscle zone, in a muscle group to an organ, okay? And so if you think about the fascia, right, as in the baby, let's go to the baby, right? super pliable, it's hydrated, it's gushy, it's not cement-like. And you think about that meridian channel, everything would be able to flow so nicely through that. There's no resistance. But then you fast forward and you think about as we age and trauma happens and it gets hard and dense, now imagine energy trying to, or electricity trying to flow through that current that's encased or, or, or uh, residing in something that's really hard and cemented. It causes blockages. It blocks the flow of chi, of energy. And so then there are predictable organ, physiological, and even mental uh, health problems that occur from the dense fascia that you can change directly through stretching. Okay. And so it's really, really exciting. Like we actually call each of our stretches by the organ that they're associated with. So the demonstration of this stretch is associated with a large intestine. Right. So that's a perfect example. Yeah. So if you want to improve the health of your digestion, your ability to eliminate, you would do that stretch for the back of the shoulders, which would also help with anything going on in your neck. And then there would also be a deeper level, uh, an emotional improvement that would occur or a psychological improvement that would occur. And for that particular stretch, there's a number of things. If you, send, if you tend to be a little bit obsessive, obsessive compulsive, that would relax. If you have a hard time completing things, that would relax. Um, if it's difficult for you to be fair or you feel like life isn't fair, that would get better. So there are a number of emotional, psychological results, as well as physiological results that you're going to get from a specific stretch. A couple of the physiological ones with large intestine are uh, high and low blood, blood pressure. pressure. That's a big one. Uh, venous blood flow. Um, but a couple of things that people are more familiar with generally with Chinese medicine, if you know, kidneys associated with fear, yeah. you know, lungs associated with grief, frustration, liver. These are kind of things that I've heard before I learned about you know, this, this, this right. type of thing. So, you know, it's, it, that's, that's kind of what's going on. So, so our way of addressing that, it's not that we're saying don't get acupuncture, go totally get acupuncture. But in addition to that, 
you can change the muscle fascia where that meridian channel is going and you're going to get a really powerful result, sometimes even more powerful than you would get by getting acupuncture because you're stimulating the flow of chi through that meridian. And so that's really exciting and a added boon to this holistic approach to health that we're, you know, that these stretches teach you. Well, one thing that was common that I experienced in my mid forties, um, and I was doing this work, uh, was I would get up at night to go to the bathroom. Yeah. And that never happened before. And it happened a couple nights in a row. And I mean, I was stretching people. And I was giving advice to people and helping them stretch their lateral hamstring, which is the bladder meridian. And it, it took me a couple of days to actually be like, oh my God, I got to stretch my bladder. And I stretched it, sleep through the night. And that was, you know, that was over 10, 12 years ago. So in addition to, you know, getting rid of the pain and the stiffness, you can target your physiological function, whatever your issue is, and specific emotional issues you, or mental issues that you might be having. And so that's essentially the template that we provide you with in these courses. We have two, uh, a great manual for each course um, that's really logical. We put it like there's a, prog a progression of um, problem solving, flows, things to do. And then during the course of the weekend, you'll experience, even if you've been stretching with us, very specifically effects that you'll have that you might not have gotten because you know, we kind of focus on flows and general things that way. Okay. Yeah. And um, so I think the one thing that we wanted to cover that we haven't yet is balancing muscle groups and how, you know, this idea of not fixating on your pain point and instead going to the source of it, which is often the balancing muscle mm -hmm. group and give people some examples of that. So you want to go into that? So, yes. So Sita already said there's 16 major organs and there's 16 muscle groups in our body in relation to this bendable body resistance stretching. Eight in the legs, eight in the arms. Um, they're elements in Chinese medicine. So the large intestine that we did here, um, which goes on the back of the hand into the index finger, is balanced by lung on the chest, on the front, which goes into the thumb. Um, and so if you want to think about your leg or your arm as a circular, and this is where we identify where the meridians run through. So I'll just, uh, in the arm on the front, is the heart meridian that runs down the front center. And then on the, directly on the back is small intestine. That's the fire element in Chinese medicine. Outside, inside are two meridians uh, that Bob Cooley came up with, which is thymus for the immune system, appendix, take toxins out of the face and the brain. Diagonals, right? Lung, uh, large intestine, lung, pericardium on the front and the skin on the back. But it's not just in the arm. It goes up into the shoulder. Yeah, the meridian goes yeah. all the way up. So by affecting the tissue in the shoulder area here, where the dense tissue is, it affects movement at elbow, wrist, hand, and the organ associated with the movement you're making. And then there's eight in the legs. Sexual meridian, front, brain in the back, outside, inside, gallbladder, liver, and the diagonals, stomach, pancreas, and then in the groin is kidney and bladder in the back of the outside. So like the reason that we're telling you this and the reason that we teach this template or this system so that you learn the eight balancing muscle groups, the 16 muscle groups and the organs they're associated with and the meridian channels is because when a pain point shows up, right, it sh or a stiff area shows up, you always 100% of the time need to go to the balancing muscle group to deal with it because that's usually where the dense fascia has accumulated. So you feel a symptom in one location and you're like, oh, symptom, 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 symptom. You're so on that. But that's not really where the problem is. And so, and, and there's really not anyone out there addressing it in this way. They may have an idea about it, but they don't have a system. And so, you know, it's kind of huge if you think about it. So the balancing muscle, another way to think about it, while you make a movement, you know, whatever that movement is, there's a prime mover. Now all the muscles move and are involved in any movement. Uh, but uh, if you go to lift your arm above your head, uh, these muscles have to contract and shorten, right? And the traps, and 
you got to shorten. So what's lengthening? The muscles over here that attach on the other side. So the limiting factor in raising your arm are the muscles not shortening here. So the balancing muscle group, um, wherever you have a symptom, something hurts, you got to go to the balancing muscle group. And by the end of that course one, lay the foundation, you're going to be able to pinpoint and point to something that hurts, identify the meridian and go to the balancing muscle. And then we have flows that are going to be really nice for you to do. Uh, and we, we go a little deeper. Yeah, you definitely um, want to be able to get out of this pattern of symptom focus. You got to get into source focus. And once you factor in the fascia, understand the role it's playing in the body, and then understand the relationships that muscle groups have. And it's, I mean, not, I mean, it's eight pairs, you know, John always says, if you can count to 16, you can learn this. It is very, very simple. And I do, you know, I, I was doing this, uh, this is like my second year in Bob. I, I trained, I dove right in, you know, I was like, I'm doing this and I'm, I was doing it every day for myself and I was learning it and I was hanging out with more experienced people. And I'm with, uh, my first athlete, you know, I traveled to meet this guy and, uh, he had he didn't tell me anything. He just, we started stretching. All of a sudden, he was on my shoulder. He said, it all hurts. Now, I knew the six, I knew, I knew what we're going to, you all going to learn in course one, the 16 meridians and muscle groups. And so he's afraid to even make any more movements. You know, this is a, you know, top, top athlete. And I'm like, where does it hurt? And he's like, oh, over here. I'm like, no, no, no. Can you point? And it took him a while, but he did eventually point. He pointed to his son, my, and then my mind, I'm like, oh, skin. I got to stay away from skin. I go right to pericardium. Which is the balancing which muscle Which is the balancing group. muscle group. And then I do a little opposing. You know, that's course two. And then I start doing these. I do every, I don't go near skin. Spent about 10, 15 minutes doing everything except the symptom that he. Nowhere near it. He gets up, and he's trying to find it. <laughs> now, he had it for a number of years. He didn't tell me. He had a lot of things that we erased over the course of a couple of weeks. Um, but it's that simple. Yeah. It's really that simple. You find it, you stay away from it, and then everything, and then it gets better. And the thing that you have to understand is so, okay, so he had this symptom in his shoulder, right? And he had no pain in the areas that John was stretching, right? But that's where the fascia had accumulated which you don't feel. Remember, you don't feel it. And so the area that he was feeling the pain was overworking. It was compensating for that resistance, that straight jacket that the fascia puts on the muscle and doesn't allow movement. So that another area overworks, you have pain and symptom and you keep on focusing there. And it's like, it's, it's an uphill battle that you are not gonna win. Bottom line, you've got to start addressing the densest fascia in your body. And yeah. the other part that's really the interesting too is that there's a universality to dense fascia in the body. I like to use the turtle as an example. We're all kind of like turtles, us humans. You know how turtle is all fleshy on the front and has a big hard shell on the back? We do too. That's how our body is set up. So the back of the body generally, universally speaking, has really hard tissue and the front is a lot more gushy. So symptoms tend to tend, tend to show up a bit more in the front as well as in the joints, because when the muscles don't work, the joints overwork. So if you want to take pressure off of your joints and off of those pain points that are showing up, you need to deal with the densest fascia in the body. So you want to learn where it is universally and you want to learn those eight pairs so that you can go to a source and stay away from a symptom. Um, it's, a, it's a real estate issue. The fascia, as it gets dense, takes up space in your body that doesn't allow the muscle to move. And so then the joints become compressed. An easy way to think about it is the spine. A lot of people, as they, you know, you get older and they're back pain and, you know, they get an x-ray. It's like, oh, you have compression. You have spondylolithiosis. You have whatever it is in the cervical, herniated, within, herniated disc. And those are, that's what's happening is those things are, how, why are they compressing on each other? You're not carrying 150 pounds on your shoulders every day. So like what is compressing the bones on each other? Well, it's mostly coming from below in the hamstrings, like see the set on the back of the body. 
back of the body, back of the body. But it's fascia. It's fascia. It's the fascia that's becoming denser and denser. So then the muscles are getting weaker and weaker. And so when you do resistance stretching, you get less dense fascia and you get stronger and stronger. The idea that your skeleton or that your muscles are ever going to overpower fascia is a complete fallacy. You can strength train, you can get chiropractic adjustments all day long. They, it will not overpower unhealthy fascia. It can't. It doesn't have the force within it or the tensile strength. You have to directly address the fascia. And to finish that statement, those discs will create space. Um, had, I think, three or four examples over the years, a young person, an older person, where they went back and got x-rays, and there was space, like a, a 30-second, 16th of an inch between pain was gone. So it, it's all about the resistance, very simple movement, and that the changes fascia. fascia. Yeah. So, so what we wanted to do was to continue with that large intestine stretch and also do a stretch for the legs to just really drive home this idea that the sensation place is not usually where you need to stretch to get the change in flexibility. Okay. So do you want to go into large intestine and, um, a, uh, uh, you were going to do a, a quad stretch, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, or you know, we stretch. can tie in strength too. This would be fun to do. We'll just do this. So what we'll do, uh, we'll do a before and after. I'm going to stay on the one arm first, and then we're going to do the other one. So we'll do like three sets on one arm. But now we can do this off your knees. You could do it on the back of the chair. We'll do a little mini push-up. Now, you don't have to go all the way down. So a push-up determines the strength of your chest, right? It's developing the chest. So, you know, we can be on our knees. Um, you know, you can be on your feet, whatever it is. And just go down a little bit and then push yourself up. Go down a little bit and feel what you feel. You feel the chest, shoulders, elbows. Okay. Now, that's the check-in. We're just checking in there. Now. Let's come on back to our large intestine stretch for the back of the shoulder. And uh, pillar one is the start position. So let, we know what we're stretching, back of shoulder, back of the arm. Pillar one, elbow, shoulder height, elbow out to the side, grabbing the elbow, the elbow is resisting moving back and you're pulling against resistance and then let it go. And go back. You see, I'm not pulling over here because my chest gets in the way and it stops resisting. Let it go. Again, let's do about 10. Bend those knees, get nice and comfortable. Let it go. I like to encourage people to breathe in and out through your nose unless you're doing a specific breathing technique. It's kind of healthy. So resist, 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 resist. Let it go. You can relax your hand and your wrist of the arm you're stretching. Let it go. Leg. Okay, that's good. Shake it out. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back again and put our two arms up at our side, about shoulder height, and then go back. It's back even further than the first time we did it. Can you feel that? I can feel that. That arm's going back further. You can see it in the camera. It's pretty well. Okay, shake it out. Let's do another set. So it's like the opposite of weightlifting. They got a great program for exercise, but they're doing the wrong movement. Let's do another set. Because they do three, four sets of a muscle group, right? Resist. Re so what do you notice third time around? The elbow can start back further. So I'm noticing my elbow can go back further, which is great, right? Let it go. We can do about eight. Let it go, let it go. Okay. Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Now that shoulder's dropping. So that tells me it was too tense, right? It feels really nice. Now let's see where that's going. And how about the sensation on the front? I feel like there's space in the shoulder. Not only do I have no sensation, well, if I go back far enough, you see how far back it's going? And this one's still not going back. Can you feel that? Now let's do one more short set, six repetitions. Shake it out. Let's do six. Resist. And remember, it's not a big range. It's about the resistance. Resist, 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 resist. Let it go. Three, four, 
five, and six. Okay, shake it out. Now, let's check out that push-up. Let's see what happened with that push-up. So we're gonna get down on our mat here. So I was doing them off my feet, so I'm gonna go down. Whoa. So we would love to hear your comments on this. How are you experiencing this? This feels like nothing and also feels like a hydraulic lift in that shoulder. And I still feel the strain over here. This is getting a strength gain. Can you feel the gain in strength? Strength feels like nothing. There's no strain. Somebody's asking why you shake it out. Shake it out, shake it out. Well, you know, it's an exercise and um, I like to shake it out. You know, <laughs> well, shake it out and check it out. Shake it out and check it out. Do you feel how much stronger your chest got? And we didn't touch the chest. We didn't go after the chest at all. We stretched the muscle, balancing the chest muscles, and our chest got stronger. And so the same thing would happen if you had pain in your chest. Same thing would happen if you had pain in the front of your shoulder. You would stretch the back, you know, depending on what meridian it is. Um, are you gonna have them do the other arm? Or we oh my God, other arm. close to the end here. It's okay, let, let's bounce it out. Yeah, let's bounce it out. Um, I stretch so much. I, I, it doesn't bother. It's kind of cool to feel the difference because you can always go back an hour or two and stretch it out. So let's do the other arm. So now you're learning how to do the technique and resist at the start, resist, resist, resist. And then just, you know, that beginning is a great opportunity to pause for a moment with resistance and that'll help you get into the right position. And whatever that is for you, your attention will go somewhere. I'll be like, oh, my ribs are a little turned. My hips want to turn this way. My knees want to bend a little bit. Let it go. Let it go. Breathing in and out through your Now, I notice this shoulder's a little, has more resistance. It's tougher tissue. I have a little less sensation. Okay, shake that out. So the sides are not symmetrical. Check, yeah, they're not, not symmetrical. You might notice that, that you have a little difference from side to side. And you might not notice. You might not be asymmetrical. Um, that's starting to feel a little better. It's starting to relax a little bit. Not as loose and as nice as this shoulder. This has, still has more space in the shoulder joint. So let's do another round. Another set. Let it go. Let it go. Resist, 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 resist at the start and all the way through. Now you notice if you're watching me, I'm going right there. That's it. That's and I'm getting a big change. Because if I don't like what, like 12 inches at the most. Uh, at the most. not even maybe about 12 inches. But the start position is increasing. The muscle's able to get shorter and shorter. So when we want to make a movement. It requires a muscle. Okay, let's shake that out, check it out, shake it out, check it out. Ooh, neck's starting to get really nice and loose now. I think, you know, another point is flexibility is not range of motion. Flexibility is a muscle that works. Yeah, it's a muscle that works. We want our muscles to work better. We do, see, we're so focused on the pain, we're not thinking, oh, the muscle's not working. So let's get the muscle to work better. Let's do set number three. Let's do about six. And so for that reason, strength and flexibility go hand in hand. You know? Oh, yeah. Because you're only as strong as you are flexible. Well, most of the range of motion that people have or are exhibiting in a lot of instances is false. Is false. false range of motion. We're making sure. it out of joint. Okay, that one helped with space and movement in the joint. Now, I know we did an extra set on this side, and I can feel it. It's probably my better side. It is. Um, but they both feel really kind of amazing. Um, and we barely did any. So we would love to you know, answer any of your questions or Yep, we're gonna stick around and answer comments. a few questions here. Um, I can we switch sides so I can get in there? Oh, totally. Um, okay. Let's let me get in so I can read some of these questions. Um, so first of all, actually, uh, courses, they are happening. Um, this weekend, course one, it's on Zoom. You can come from next anywhere weekend. in the world. Sorry, yeah, next weekend. Well, it's Saturday. 
So oh, next nice. weekend, January 14th and 15th, uh, it is 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. standard Eastern time. And you get the recordings. OK, so and it's Saturday and Sunday. So it's eight hours of stretching for each course. Course one's next weekend and course two is in February, I think the 11th and 12th. Um, and we're going to deep dive into everything that we talked about today. And you're going to get a manual so you can follow along. Now, let me and, put... And it's not, we didn't cover everything, but we covered the basics. Oh yeah, totally. So obviously 16 hours of training. Um, so I am putting the link to the courses in the chat, but you are obviously going to get emails about it. And you can also go to our website and it will be very clear. But there it is. All right, let's get and some questions answered. there's a manual answered. for the course one and a manual for course two. You get a manual. Okay, here's all the stuff about the sound. Uh, very loud, sound is fine, crystal clear. Okay, sound, sound, sound. Um, suspends at joints. Somebody noticed that, Eleanor. Um, okay, Joanne. Okay, so that's sound. Does this help with osteoporosis? Yeah, and I think that John talked about that when he was addressing the compression in the joint, in the well, spine. So the, to get meridian specific, osteoporosis is a loss of uh, bone density. Yeah. And bladder stretches, the tissue association is the health is bones. It improves the health of your bones. It improves the density of your bones. So, yeah. What happens, and you're the one that articulated this the best, is that dense, hard fascia starts to replace the bone. It starts to act like a bone. And so you have this idea that, oh, I need to do more weight bearing exercises. I need to strengthen. But actually, what you really need to do is remove some of that dense fascia so it stops acting like a bone because it's become so hard and immovable. And then the muscles work, and then the bone can actually be weight-bearing. Well, well, think about it. They say to do weight-bearing exercises when you get osteopenia or osteoporosis. You didn't lose weight. Like, how are you bearing less weight? The fascia is growing, and the muscles aren't firing, so your foot can't. Like if you do a bunch of hamstring stretches, your feet go sink right into the ground and they can push off beautifully. Then now you're weight bearing. Now the bones are bearing the weight, but when the fascia gets unhealthy, the fascia. You just always have to go back to that base point, which is your strength and your muscles, your health and your muscles directly dependent on the fascia because it's encasing every fiber in the muscle. So mm. you can do that weight training all day long, but if you haven't removed it's like this. This is kind of a nice way to think about it. So if you have a ton of dead skin on, where's a place that you get a lot of dead hard skin, the back of your heel, that gets really hard and dense and you keep putting lotion on it. You keep putting lotion on it, but it doesn't ever remove that hard skin. You have to physically remove it. These movements, they are like a facial internally. It's like, it's like a, I mean, to be brutal, like a knife that cuts the fascia away, it subtracts. So then you but it actually doesn't hurt. Have, yeah, it doesn't, but it doesn't hurt. No bad side effects. <laughs> there's no bad side effects. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. Um, yes. Uh, loved hearing say John Grock. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Donna, is resisted stretching the same as isometric stretching? No, because isometric stretching is going to be just in an end range. Do you want to embellish on that? Yeah, the fascia changes with resistance and a movement. Yeah. And uh, yeah. It's very common in term in the in, in the understanding of flexibility to get an increased range of motion. So isometrics, PNF, they're always trying to increase the range of motion, the length ability of, of the of the stretch, override that end range. And we're not trying to do that at all. If anything, we want the muscle to shorten more. Yeah, and that's where you get the acceleration, the uh, speed. That's a muscle and, that's working better. You know, the other thing I had written down, I want to tell you, you get an increase in skill level of whatever, if you're a gardener, or you play piano, or you're an athlete, your endurance, your aerobic capacity goes up with this. Yeah. Um, you know, strength, speed, acceleration. Acceleration is really, really important if you're, you know, I mean, and I can see some of our, um, you know, longtime stretchers here and they know that, you know, they'll tell us, you know, my heart rate's up, I'm burning calories, you know, that, that kind of thing. I'm sweating for the first time sweating. in 20 years. So someone's saying what stretch stretches the bladder. So the bladder meridian runs along the lateral hamstring, which is the back outside of the thigh. So if you do a stretch for that muscle group, 
you're going to affect your bladder. Our YouTube channel has plenty of bladder. Stretches. Yeah. We're, it's one, it's probably the stretch we teach more might than any other. One of the toughest tissue in the body. Uh, what is a flow? A flow is like a sequence. You know, so it's a number of stretches in an order and they're strategic. We, we have them set up and you learn that in, in the courses, like how to be strategic about your flow so that you can really target something specifically or the body holistically. Um, let's see, Kimberly, do you have a way to assist the heart? So to help the heart. Oh, absolutely. There's a heart, heart stretch, stretches, heart right. meridian. Absolutely. Um, it's a chest stretch. Um Amelie, in Meridian talk, some dropout in sound. So I, I mean, so if there's sound issues, it's probably twofold. One, it could be happening on your end. The other, it could be an internet dropout on ours. Um, but everything is set up correctly. So hopefully it sounds cool right now. Um, let's see. Love exfoliate. Uh, source focus too. Yes, Donna. Um, is this also related to chi? Gong. Um I think all movement is related to one another, um, but we try and just be super simple. And I don't like, I, I'm going to just say, n I don't know any other method that does this. Like there's resistance stretching and th well, there are no will, other yogas hmm. or, you know, I will say if you do resistance stretching, you like Qigong and that's what you do. Your Qigong will get much yeah. better, but it's not Qigong. It's going to be very yeah, different. No, it's different yeah. um, let's see. Uh, are there any meridians that address brain? Absolutely. And Parkinson's? Absolutely. So there's the brain meridian, central hamstring. Um, and Parkinson's we associate with large intestine, uh, right? Large intestine stretchings will help with Parkinson's. Um, toxins that are in the brain are the appendix for the lats. Um, they hi the appendix actually hyperoxygenates the brain in a really great way. And if you don't have an appendix or a gallbladder or a spleen, stretching those muscle groups will produce the results that those organs are responsible for. It's how the body works. Oh, wow. So Lynn is typing, wow, further. So I'm assuming your arm went back further. I'm going to just make that assumption. Um, Sandy, why do you show? We answered why we shake it out. Um, let's see, Lynn. Shaking out improves blood flow throughout. There you go. Maybe that's why you're doing it, John. Donna, what are you resisting? Your hand is pulling your arm forward and you were resisting that pull. Yes, that's exactly what you're doing. Um, Polly, can you demo a leg one? Let us get to the questions. Eileen, can you show us sitting versions of the three front of the leg? Um, I'm not sure what stretch you're talking about, the three front of the leg. Um, let's see, uh, Kelly, is there a way to modify yoga asanas with assistant stretching? So um, all of our stretches culminate in a yoga posture. The problem is that when people go to that end range yoga posture, they often have a lot of biomechanical substitutions. But we already describe our stretches as like ultimately culminating in a yoga posture. So if you want to get better yoga poses, resistance stretching will help tremendously. Like if well, you, well, she's specifically asking, can you modify a yoga posture? So say you're in downward dog. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, for downward dog, you don't push away, you pull the hands toward your feet. And that's, that's a really a heart pose. Um, you would have to resist the pose yeah, a lot, but the problem is it's an end range. Like a lot of them are end range. So is there a lot of biomechanical substitution going on and you almost can't even fully resist? And you're certainly not getting the beginning range of the muscle. The answer so, to your question is yes. Depends. Like pigeon pose, there's ways you can resist. Yeah. So, so we, we do have actually a resistance stretch for yeah. pigeon pose. Um, okay. Let's see. Emma really wants to come in here. Should we let her in? Yeah. Our dog is complaining on the other side of the door. So we're just going to let her join the class. <laughs> okay next question um can you demo so they want a leg stretch <laughs> let's see eleanor what do you suggest for lower back tailbone area what meridian is that connected to any and recommended stretch mm -hmm. so for the low back we would recommend a bladder stretch but if you're specifically wanting to target the tailbone like the sacrum we would actually suggest an adductor stretch so that's the liver meridian um, so two, you could try depending on really what's going on and see which one gives you the most relief, um, either lateral hamstring associated with the bladder or liver, um, associated with the adductors or adductors associated with the liver. Um, 
Let's see, Kimberly, mm -hmm. can you help me know how to determine if I am resisting enough? We would have to see you stretch. Um, you know, we can do it can on a screen. A yeah, you could always come to a free class or you can come to the courses. We're going to be watching you stretch all weekend. Um, one thing to say for sure is you always want to be aware of the point of resistance. So for example, the stretch that John showed you, the point of resistance is this arm pressing back and this hand pressing forward, pulling forward. So the point of resistance is here. Can you feel the resistance there? Not necessarily in the area because remember, can't feel fascia. So that's what we always suggest is that you know the point of resistance. Um, oh, and resisting enough, ah, that's tricky. Um, again, we would have to watch you stretch. You can resist maximally, like 100%. There just won't be as much movement. And that's fine. You could just move like an inch or two and you're going to get an incredible result. Um, but sometimes it can be hard to sustain that for multiple repetitions. So you would maybe need to pull back on a little bit on the resistance to well, actually do know, the repetitions. Think about weightlifting and you don't put the most weight you can lift on the bar all the time. Right. You know, you start out with 10 pounds, you make a bunch of movements and you put like 20 pounds, you make a few less movements. Than the, and then you put more weight on. So it's, it's similar to that, but it, it can be, you know, tailored to, to you specifically how you feel. Can this impact bone spur going out the back, not bottom of my heel, give relief to sharp pain and swelling of the foot? The answer is yes. Uh, it would depend on how many repetitions you do and how much resistance you do. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, does this help nerve problems like pain in the shoulder, down the arm and the leg? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see what stretch helps the knee joint. Uh, we usually say the central hamstring, the brain meridian and the hip flexors, the sexual meridian is really helpful for the knee joint. You can get more specific than that, but that's certainly a good starting point. Uh, Kim, I've had three unsuccessful rotator repair attempts. The next thing I've been told is a total shoulder replacement, which I've not wanted to have for some reason. Are there any suggestions you may have or opinion? Yeah, uh, you just, you'd need to start stretching. Um, you'd wanna stretch the muscles in your shoulder as well as your legs. Yeah, you know, uh, that's, it, it, this is, I feel like it's an example of kind of maximal resistance, mm -hmm. especially with the muscles on the back of the shoulder, like skin, Small intestine skin is a safe bet and very little movement. Yeah, not a lot of range. You will get relief from a lot, a lot of resistance. And when you resist, like the joints suspended and, and there'll be no pain. And it's counterintuitive, which is why mm -hmm. it's really helpful to um, do a deep dive like the courses, because if you have an injury like that, you're afraid. Right. And you're like, I, I feel like the more I resist, the more I'm going to hurt myself. You can't and even so imagine. it's that actually the opposite. And so how do we get you over that fear bump? Well, you need to spend maybe a little bit of time, you know, and, and kind of experience it and have some guidance so that you can really know that. Um, but we feel confident. Um, let's see. Eileen, of the 16 organs, John said there are three in the front and three in the back of the leg and one on the inside and outside. So there's eight in the lower body, eight in the upper body. Um, let me just see. I struggle with the three stretches in the front of the leg. I cannot get on the floor and need to do these stretches as much as the three meridians on the back of the leg. Um, so I, I feel like we could be more helpful, but I also feel like we need more information. Like, like what is the position that you struggle to get in? Um, or are you just telling me that you're not able to do those three stretches because they're require that you be on the ground? I'm not quite clear what you're asking there. Eileen, if you could reword it. Um, let's see. Just have to mention how beautiful the pumps are. <laughs> um, thank you for answering questions. Drina, I'm just excited for the training to begin. I've been stretching for eight months or so. Awesome. We're excited too. Let's see, Erin, are there stretches that will help with underarm fat? I gained a lot of weight quickly some years ago and it remains there. Um, yeah, that's like triceps, right? Yep, it, it, you know, um, stretching will, uh, it's an amazing toner of the body and uh, it gets rid of fatty areas and things like that, yeah. Um, let's see, and it would be stretches for the back of the arm. So four of the major muscle groups in the upper body. Um, let's see, 
Eileen, I can't do the three, three stretches because usually it is taught on the ground. I cannot doubt. Okay. So in our membership, we yeah. have standing and seated versions of every single stretch. There are multiple poses for every muscle group. So 16 muscle groups, easy, five different versions for every muscle group. There's actually much more than that. And we have seated and standing versions, but obviously if we're teaching in like a free public forum, we usually pick something that's like kind of every, like most people can do. Um, and so we don't, and we also like to pick ones that, you know, are easy to learn when you're just getting started. Um, but we do have seated and standing versions for all of those. Um, let's see, Denise, I cannot stand up straight. I lean forward. What stretches would help hamstring stretches, believe it or not. Um, and we explain that actually also in the course is why your legs have such an impact on your shoulders. Um, okay, you guys, let me just do this and say everyone and put the link here one more time. So you've got the link if you want to join us. Again, it's happening next weekend and then uh, February 11th and 12th. You can email us any questions. Uh, there's going to be a recording of this on Facebook, on YouTube, and we'll share this one as well. In addition to learning and the problem solving the manuals, you're going to feel great because we are going to do quite a bit yeah, of stretching. Yeah, you do quite a bit of stretching. So there you're is that. Feel amazing. Yeah. Um, and you'll develop, you'll uh, get a feel for your capacity that way. Um, have you ever used Active 5 device to measure the amount of resistance you are applying? No. No, we just feel it internally. And yeah, feel the But result. I hear what you're saying. Um, it had been done years ago uh, in Boston studio. Someone brought it in. Uh, it wasn't quite um, too many variables, um, but I know what you're saying. And I, and I have thought that that would be a great thing to set up because what you would see, um, see, it's, it's interesting because if you, you know, a 90 year old person, you know, if they're kicking their hamstring down and they're being assisted, it would take two to three people to move them. So the amount of force is enormous. It would be more force than like a 25 year old NFL player would have with that 25 NFL, you know, they, they could squat 800 pounds. They can run a four five forty. And so force, is Resistance. it the muscular contraction that's producing it? Or is it the fascia, dense fascia producing it? Because that is not absolute. There's just like the way, like I said, too many variables to identify, um, and you wouldn't think just because the woman's generating 500 pounds of force and the NFL player is generating 500. It's different force. The NFL player has access to it and the old person doesn't have any access to the muscles. So Lakshmi, can you place a suction cup and do the stretching on your biceps, for example? I don't know. I mean, it would, it would have to be a pretty strong, clean surface because the amount of force you need. Um, I've been using a, uh, you know, a, a strap thicker than a yoga strap. And I have like a weightlifting band and I put it up in around a door and it's a lot of force. Like there's some doors the places I've been to where that door is going to come off its jam and I'm not that strong, but if the fascial force is enormous. So uh, a suction cup might work, might not. I don't know. Um, Lynn Thomas is trying to ask, is small intestine good for the heart? Oh, yeah, it would be because it's a balancing muscle group. It supports it. So it would support it, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, Eleanor, you did not explain what suspending at joints mean. Oh, well, you experience sure. it. You know, um, I, I think the example I used was the spine and that there's a lot of people can understand that things get compressed. Um, and, and then you lose the cartilage and it's like bone on bone and you have to get an operation and things like that. When you change the dense fascia in the hamstrings, you will create space between the joints. It's not, not gonna grow the cartilage back. But I think she's asking when you stretch, mm -hmm. why are the joints suspended? Like during a stretch movement. Oh, because the fascia protects you because the fascia is engaged and on, enveloped within the fascia is not just the muscle, but the ligaments and the joints. You know, and so like when we, yeah, yeah, that's it. So, so yeah, so as soon as you resist um, in that moment, and you should be able to feel it actually, the joint is out of play actually and suspended because you're targeting and grabbing the dense hard fascia, 
right? And so we're not passively allowing you to move into a joint. It it's, doesn't even get to that point. And there's a total suspension there, especially if you're able to really maintain the resistance, right? So if someone sends us an email and is like, I've been stretching and my shoulder hurts, the immediate response we have is resist more, decrease the range. Because traditional stretching goes into the joint. And that's what we've been doing our whole life. It's hard to unlearn. And so it's so hard to unlearn it. And it's so hard to be like, oh, wow, I really need to resist that much. Wow. The resistance really needs to be the primary thing I'm doing here because it's so the opposite of all traditional stretching. But once you do it and you get it and you feel it, you're going to feel the joint suspended and out of play. It will be obvious. Um, with the exercise that we did, did we suspend that? Yeah, that X, that should have not have been going into your shoulder joint. That should have been in the tissue on the back of the shoulder. And somebody felt the suspension. I felt more movement, rotation in the joint. Mm -hmm. And if you're at all worried about a joint that's adjacent or nearby a muscle group that you're stretching, resist a hundred percent and go two inches. Don't move a lot until you start to get comfortable well, with it. And then you'll learn how much range you actually have. I mean, it ain't just, it's, an just, inch. it's really the resistance. Eileen, I have a limited budget. Would it be better to spend the money on the membership or the courses you're advertising today? That's a tricky question. Um, it depends what you want. So if you want ongoing access to videos, you can follow along to the membership. If you want to really understand deeply, not even deeply, just understand the system and you'd rather have a manual to look at, you're not going to have 200 videos though, right? Then I would do the membership. The other thing, I mean, excuse me, the courses. The other thing about the courses is, you know, we don't have five different versions of stretches that we teach in the courses. We just teach you maybe one or even two at the most. So if you're someone that's like, oh, I really need seated or standing or any of that, I would do the membership because you've got all that in there. Um, yeah. You're welcome. Okay, you guys, it is 411. We've officially spent an hour and 11 minutes and it was our goal to only take 45 minutes of your time. So I think it's a good time to close up. Um, and of course, we're in constant. Touch. Thanks for all your questions yeah, thanks for and questions. your participation. And you can contact us at any time and ask questions. And of course, we have lots of videos available for you to try out on our blog, our YouTube channel, etc. So yeah, have a good rest of your weekend and thank you. We'll see ya. Bye. Bye bye everybody. Bye.